Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare to celebrate the sacred history. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on, on earth, earth, peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we, we glorify you. We, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and the living God, lead us to a chair in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may greet where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments, and, with, and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is the grace before God. For this you have been called, because Christ has also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. 
He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you. Whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but finds over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, when he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus uses figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they may have life, and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. About ten years ago or so, it was a beautiful morning like this, and I was leaving the rectory to go to the gym, and the rectory I was living at, the garage and rectory were separated, so I went outside and I could smell a little stunk, and I didn't think about it living in Elk County. So I went to the gym and I came back, and I could still smell it pretty strong. So there was a large window well by the side of the rectory, and I could hear some leaves rustling in that. So I got close and I thought, don't tell me, and I looked and I thought, sure enough. So I went down to the basement, looked out the window, and there was a skunk that had fallen in the window well. And I thought to myself, it's quarter to six on a Sunday morning. Who do you call to get a skunk out of your window well? And I thought, I'm gonna call the Benedictine sisters over at the convent. So I called Sister Jacinta and I said, Sister, Am I wrong in thinking that if a skunk falls in your window well, it's not getting out? She said, no, Father, it's not getting out. She said, don't worry, after prayers and Mass, I'll be over, and I'll set a trap. So I went and had 7.30 Mass, and I came over after Mass, and there was Sister, flat on the ground, full habit, setting the trap. She said, Father, don't worry about it. I'm going to go, you go home for your day off, and I'll take care of it. And sure enough, I came home the next day, and the skunk was gone. So I called Sister Jacinta and I thanked her. I said, Sister, how'd you do it? And she said, well, you put the, I put the trap there and skunks like Cheetos and tuna fish. And so she put that going up to the trap. Skunk went in, she said, but the door didn't close. So she had to take a, a shovel to close the door and then she just hauled the skunk away. And I never thought, I never forgot that scene in my mind of sister, full habit, laying flat on the ground, setting the trap. And I always think of this gospel. Many times when we think of sheep, we think they're so cute. But really, sheep stink and are dirty. And in the gospel today, we're reminded that at times, following Jesus can stink. We have to get dirty. And maybe we don't want to do that. But think of the many times just by practicing our faith, we offend people. Or you think you're so much better than everyone else because you go to church. Or when we correct someone for doing something out of fraternal love, people get back at us. They're angry because they think we're holier than thou. No, we're not. We're just trying to be disciples. Jesus Christ. 
And we look through the history of the church, we look at the apostles. At times, it was steep. They stuck. At times, they had to get dirty defending the faith. And ultimately, some of them even gave their life. And this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is always called Good Shepherd Sunday, where we're called to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd and follow him, no matter how dirty we may get. And we remind ourselves also the image of the Good Shepherd calling us gives us the opportunity to reflect and pray for religious vocations, in a special way, vocations. Many times people say, Father, why doesn't God call as many people today, as many young men today, to be priests as he did in the 50s and 60s? And I always say God calls just as many people today as he did 40, 50 years ago. But we don't listen to the voice. There are so many distractions in our world. Sometimes our own families distract us from hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd. No matter what walk of life we're called to follow Jesus, at times it's difficult, at times it stinks, at times we're called to get dirty. But what does Jesus say at the end of the Gospel? I came so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. If we want to live life to the fullest, if we want to be the happiest, then we need to listen to that voice of Jesus and follow him not be afraid that we're going to get dirty, or at times we're going to stink. You know, I think of the example of Sister Jacinta, just a very simple example of helping someone else out. And she wasn't afraid to get dirty. She wasn't afraid of being, having stunk by the stump, but rather she gave herself totally to help others. And that's what we're called to do as disciples of Listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd and not be afraid to follow. A profession of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. With faith and confidence in a loving God, let us present our petitions for the Church that we may be a living witness to the need for repentance, individually and collectively, always returning to the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent beatitude, especially for this parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, in a special way we remember the living and deceased members of the cathedral parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the coronavirus, people affected by the quarantine, doctors and scientists working on a vaccine, that God may watch over them, guide them, and bring them comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we come before you this day. Hear our petitions and grant them according to your will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of God. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, and the fruit of the vine, the work of human things, it will become our spiritual good. Blessed be God forever. Praise, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true man who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every man, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they have played. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all things. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the people, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your truth and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world. world. Have Have mercy mercy on us. Lamb Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but but only only say the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. Look upon your cloth, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for tuning in and celebrating the Eucharist with us this morning. Just a reminder, this afternoon we have solemn vespers at 4 o'clock. Our own Father Jason Mitchell will be presider and Thomas. Also, I realize many of you who are watching are from different parishes throughout the diocese. Today, all the parishes in the diocese are supposed to take up the collection for the retired priests of the diocese, the Good Shepherd Collection. And it's not to be confused with the retired religious collection that we take up in December. That benefits our retired sisters and retired religious brothers. This one is for the diocesan priests. Many of you may or may not know that as a diocesan priest, you have to take care of your own retirement. The guys who live at the retirement home pay rent up there, and nothing is for free. And so what we're finding as they get older, some of them are going through their money, paying for assisted living. They can't go into nursing, but yet they need help. And when they run out of them, out of money, the diocese has to step in and provide for their well-being. And you know from your own experience, you have parents who are elderly, who have been in assisted living, it costs a lot of money. And if you have four or five priests in that situation, the figure goes up very quickly. So this collection goes to help those retired priests. I think of people like Monsignor Mayer and Father Galena, who are so good to us here at the cathedral, helping out any time they are needed. That collection would benefit them. So if you didn't think about contributing to the Good Shepherd Collection, if you were able to, I would encourage you to do so. It's not too late. Just put your donation in an envelope or a Good Shepherd Collection and send it to your parish or drop off it, drop it off at your parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
Thanks be to God.